huge mistakes. Don't make these huge mistakes that home buyers just like you are making every single day. And sadly, they're not even aware they're doing it. And you could even probably be doing some of them right now. The key points I'm gonna be going over today are some of the major mistakes that home buyers just like you make during the home buying process. Not only are avoiding these mistakes gonna save you a ton of money, but it's also gonna help you alleviate a ton of your stress and help you get that dream home that you want in this crazy market because you're gonna have that extra advantage. So let's get started. The number one mistake is not getting pre-approved before you're out there shopping. This mistake is so easily avoided, but truthfully, most people learn it the hard way. They find that home that they really wanna put an offer in on, they view that home, they go ahead, they wanna write an offer with their agent, the agent tells them, hey, I need a copy of your pre-approval letter, I need a copy of your DU, I need a copy of your proof of funds. And you stand there, frozen in the street, realizing, oh my gosh, I didn't do any of that. You rushed to get pre-approved, you go ahead, you get pre-approved, you get that pre-approval letter, your lender sends over the proof of funds and a copy of the DU finding showing you truly are pre-approved, only to find out there's been 35 offers submitted in that house and that house is long gone and you are just utterly disappointed. The biggest mistake right off the bat that people make is not getting pre-approved at least a couple months ahead of time before they really plan on starting to look. The second biggest mistake people make is getting the wrong type of mortgage loan. They many times go to a mortgage bank that only offers a certain number of products, whether that is only conventional loans or just conventional and FHA loans and they have missing so many different types of loan options that are available to you. So you need to make sure that you're working with somebody that has all mortgage programs available. Now this will typically be best found at a direct lender or a mortgage broker, avoiding a retail bank or an FDIC bank, meaning a bank that you go and bank at like a Chase or a Wells Fargo or a Citibank. Those are gonna be limited on the amount of products they have. Now there's so many products out there, whether that's from 3% down conventional loans to VA loans that have 0% down that you can even go ahead and get some closing cost assistance to help you that you've dedicated your life to your country. It's about time that we do something for you. To lastly, USDA loans and down payment assistance types of programs that you just do not know about unless you're being told and working with an expert. And number three is making the assumption that you need a big, large down payment. Mind you, mortgage industry is not where it was 30 years ago when you need 10 or 20% down. Believe it or not, over 80% of first time home buyers put down three and a half percent or less on their mortgage loan. As a first time home buyer, somebody that has not bought in a home within the last three years, even if you bought a home five years ago, you can still be considered a first time home buyer again. And with a conventional loan, you only need to put 3% down or an FHA loan at just three and a half percent down. And the great thing is if you do have some very giving family members, they can actually give you or gift you all of this money. And if you're looking at maybe buying a vacation home or even an investment property, you don't even need 20% down on either one of those options. You can buy that vacation home if you're looking for in Lake Havasu or you're looking for that special property that you wanna rent out as an investment property in Nashville. Investment properties only need 15% down for your first investment property and a second home or a vacation home only needs 10% down. So education is key in putting enough money down to get the best rate options without putting too much down that you're eliminating your ability to go ahead and buy additional properties or make those cool renovations you wanna do on your new home. And the number four mistake that people make commonly and they don't even realize it is choosing the wrong lender. It is so important that you choose a loan officer that works in that local market. And the reason for that is, is they've built up great rapport with all of the different buyer's agents and listing agents and escrow companies in that particular region. And guess what? in a time where we're seeing massive, massive offers on properties, you better believe that that real estate agent, if they have two equal offers, they're going to tell their sellers to take the offer from an individual loan officer that they've worked with in the past and that they know that can close on that loan in a timely fashion. And that's so important because guess what? As a loan officer, I know that I'm only as good as my last deal. And so when I'm regularly working with the same real estate agents and I'm doing loans, in that area that I regularly live in, work in, I'm gonna make sure that I do every last thing possible to make this deal go perfect so that my clients, the next time around, get their offer accepted a little bit easier with that agent. And guess what? If I, let's say, worked at Quicken Loans in a call center and I did a deal here or there, just in all the different states in the country, 
you know what, I'm not gonna run across this real estate agent. I'm not gonna know the local tax areas. I'm not gonna know all these local things that I need to know. And I'm not gonna be able to buy my clients the truly advantage they deserve to get their offer accepted. Which is why truthfully, we're not licensed in Alabama. I don't want you guys to come to me and ask me to help you do your loan in Alabama. Even if I did get licensed, you know why? Because I wouldn't give you the advantage you need to have the best chance of getting your offer accepted. The number five mistake and probably the most common mistake that I see is ignoring your credit. Credit plays such a major role in your ability to grow your financial wealth over the course of your lifetime. Somebody that has a credit score of 620 compared to 720 on average will spend $100,000 more in interest over their lifetime on loans buying at higher interest rates. Now, that doesn't mean you need to have perfect credit to be able to buy a home. Believe it or not, a FHA loan, you typically only need about a 580 credit score. And a conventional loan, you typically only need about a 620 credit score. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to get the same interest rate if you have you know, a 580 credit score versus a 700 credit score on an FHA loan. But it, you at least have that option. And as part of that pre-approval process, any great loan officer will evaluate your credit and let you know little tricks that you can do to improve that score quickly and easily, like using optoutprescreen.com or going ahead and actually paying down a credit card balance slightly, or calling your creditor and increasing your credit limit so that your current balance compared to the limit is now at a lower percentage, helping your credit score out. And you wanna start that process a couple months before you're ready to buy. Because in many cases, people have neglected their credit for years, and it's not a quick two or three week process to get that score up. But over a month or two, you can definitely see some great results which will save you thousands of dollars when you are ready to purchase that property. And the number six biggest mistake, and probably the one that most people are most afraid of, is the amount of money you need to buy a property. Now, there's so many different options out there, but you do need to understand that when you go to buy a home, you don't just have your down payment that's involved in buying that property. Just like if you go and you buy a car, right? It's not like you buy that car, walk off the dealership and say, oh, I don't need to pay any more money. No, what? You gotta go and get insurance for the car. You gotta register it at the DMV. You gotta go ahead and put gas in it, right? These are all things that you have to do when you buy a car. And the same thing's true when you buy a house. When you buy in a house, in addition to a down payment, if a down payment is required, you need to make sure you have enough money for things like closing costs, as well as your first month's payment that's gonna be due at closing, and a couple of months of property taxes and your homeowner's insurance bill. As a good general rule of thumb, you'll typically have about 1% of the purchase price in closing costs, and you'll need about 1% of the purchase price for these items called prepaids, which include things like your first mortgage payment, your property taxes, homeowner's insurance, and maybe a month or so of HOA dues, depending on your property. Now, you don't need a massive down payment, as I mentioned earlier, but you do need to be prepared that you will have funds needed outside of that down payment if one is required. Now, a VA loan or a USDA loan does not require a down payment if you're eligible for those products on a primary home purchase. And even if you aren't eligible for those and you want to use, like most people do, an FHA loan or a conventional loan, a conventional loan you only need 3% down as a first-time home buyer or 5% down as if it's your subsequent buyer. In an FHA loan, you only need 3.5% down. And these funds can come from a family member borrowing from your 401k, pulling out some money out of your IRA. There's lots of different ways that we can help you go ahead and be able to maximize your buying power with minimizing your down payment. Now, I hope you guys found this video useful and it really helped you avoid some of the major mistakes that so many buyers make when they're buying that process. If you wanna find out about what you could potentially qualify for, or you just had other questions about the home buying process, you can go ahead, you can click the link below, and you can schedule a time with us on our website. Or you can give us a call directly at 844-4MODERN. That's 844-4MODERN. We would love to be able to answer your questions like we've done for over 10,000 homeowners during my mortgage career. And once again, please remember that the greatest wealth you will ever create for your family is in real estate.